Welcome to this session. In this video, we will look at how we can convert the following if statement into assembly language and run it. Since we're comparing two numbers, just like any other programming language, I have to declare my variables. So here, num1 is declared with d word, and I have initialized it with 3. And num2 is also a d word, and it's also initialized with 3 as well. This if statement it states that if num1 is equal to num2, then I want x to print 1. Else, we want x to print 2. To do this, first we need to move our num1 to EAX register, then here we will compare it with num2. At this point, I use J and E, which represents conditional jump, to L1, which represents the first part of the conditional statement that we have. So if num1 was equal to num2, then the program will assign 1 to x. And in my watch window, I should be able to see number 1 as a value. Else, we're using JMP, or jump, which represents unconditional jump. And the program will go to the else part of our statement and will assign 2 to x using move x2, which will make my watch window to print 2. Okay, now let's run this program and step through every single one of those line of instruction to see what the output is going to be. We're going to start by putting a breakpoint right over here. And I'm going to use F11 to step through the program. So by clicking on F11, I'm going to be able to see the registers, the memory, and the watch window over here. For the memories, because I want to see X, I'm going to put use and sign and X in here. And once I enter it, now it's going to show me where that variable is located at. Right now everything is set at zero and because I haven't done anything to it yet but once we step through the program we're gonna check that value to see how it's gonna change. So now we're getting ready to move num1 to EAX which will cause EAX to show 3 since variable num1 is assigned to value 3. Once we do F11 3 will be moved to EAX and we can see that here EAX is now holding 3. Now it's getting ready to compare it. So we're gonna do one more F11 and now it has compared 3 with 3. So in other words it has compared our variable num2 with our variable num1 and it has jumped to our level 1. It has jumped to the first statement because 3 is equal to 3. So because that statement holds true, it's going to move to move 1 to x. So I'm going to do one more F11 and that's when this statement is going to be executed. By moving this one more time or stepping through it one more time, another F11, I should be able to see 1 in the memory and under value in our watch window. And sure enough, we can see it in the memory right over here and we can see it in our watch window. And of course, the next statement right over here is not going to be executed because um, the condition held true and 3 was equal to 3. Now, let's change that. Let's try it so um, the condition doesn't hold true. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop this debugging right now. I'm going to unclick this. And instead of 3, let's put num2, let's assign 4 as a value. So here is our breakpoint. And I'm going to do another F11. And let's go through the program. Now over here, we're going to do x there. So let's go through it now. Now, uh, knowing that num2 is not equal to num1 right now, then it should not read this. And what it's supposed to be doing, it's supposed to jump from right over here, right after it compares it, it should jump over here instead. So let's see if that's what the program is going to do. So I'm going to start with F11. We're going to move 3 to our EAX. And then another F11, we're going to compare to num2 to our EAX. And look what happens. Right now, we are right where we're going to be executing the conditional jump. But because these two are not 
equal, then it's going to jump down over here and it's going to start reading this instruction instead, which is part of our else instruction. So if I do one more F11, we should be able to see two right over here and right under our value. And sure enough, that's what we're going to see. Um, so right over here under memory, we have number two and right over here, we have number two as well. Up next, let's practice loop and find out how we can use a while loop to compare the variables num1 and num2. And increment num1 should num1 be less than num2.